Hey everypony, New Leaf here, and today comes the long-awaited little report of my adventures at Galacon. So sit back as I tell you the story about how this weekend was, everypony. <laughs> well, the first thing that happened, everypony, is we got to the hotel in our lovely carriage, and it was a little late, but we eventually got there. And as you see, the hotel is rather luxurious and, well, perfect for alicorns. I did absolutely enjoy my stay, stay there, but everypony... It only gets better when I show you the room that we got to stay in. It was the most cozy thing I ever got to sit on every pony, and needless to say, it was a very, um, you know, good way to sleep. Even though it was extremely hot that weekend, they had air conditioners and everything, which really made it a temptation to stay in there for a while. But eventually, I had to go out and had to see the joys of the convention, every pony. But before the convention, every pony, and the day before, there's usually like a meetup where you can meet some of the other ponies and humans and whoever's coming and socialize a little bit. And as you see, there's even a moment to have a little bit of a drink together and shake hugs and see who else is coming. And um, you'll meet many new faces and friends alike, every pony. So eventually, we got to the bar here that you see, and there was plenty of cider to be had there, but also many friends to meet and well interestingly enough I got to meet some um, people there that knew me but I didn't know about them knowing about me which led to some very interesting conversations every pony however eventually our meeting got thwarted by the weather ponies and they decided it would be a good day to rain a bunch of clouds onto some ponies who were just having a good time and well I think um, not everyone got discouraged by that and they really enjoyed the rain, so um, I guess that was a good way to, you know, provide some sort of remedy to the summer heat, every pony. But besides some friends, we also got to see some very questionable ponies where no pony really knows what they're up to, but I, I kept a close eye on to them, and I guess um, cider and good moods was enough to, you know, keep the, the moods in a good state, every pony. But after a while, we, you know, had to go and um, lay down for the night in the hotel. And before we got to the gala, though, that was one of my favorite things about the hotel. There was a breakfast buffet. And I, as the most uh, ravenous and hungry pony, or I can seem like that, I absolutely ate everything. And I, and I think I gave the, the humans working there probably enough work for at least three ponies but it was delicious every pony everything that was there was awesome and I I guess with a very very full stomach I eventually did waddle over to the you know convention grounds <laughs> uh, there I got to meet you know a bu bunch of familiar faces every pony you know there's shining armor Octavia and a lot of other ponies that I know and I think they're awesome, but we also got to meet King Sombra, and I didn't even know he goes to conventions, but he didn't do anything nasty to me, at least for a while, every pony. But eventually, the gates to Galacon did open, and as you can expect, many ponies were waiting to get in line, but it was all totally worth it, every pony. Once the opening ceremony went down, you could just see how many people there were. This is like just a small section of the um, auditorium. Like there's way more ponies behind the pony who took this photo than in front. But still, it was it, it is breathtaking scenery with this massive room. But Galacon or any other convention for that matter would be empty if it didn't have special guests. And you can see there's Tabitha St. Germain. And I think there is, um, like, Andrea Lipman, and there, there were other amazing guests that made my visit there a lot more interesting. But I, I have to tell you that my most favorite guest is still coming, and let's face it, they're, they're like half the reason I even went there. But all conventions usually have some sort of activities you can't do in between the convention to keep you busy in between the panels, and Galacon had this which was a um, scavenger hunt game which had 70 ponies scattered across the whole convention area and whoever found the first got some very special and I guess um, I, I guess I kind of got half of them but that um, the, the hiding places were pretty insane and amazing and it, it was definitely a great idea 
as a activity to do because it's something anyone can do. And of course, those were a good way to discover the grounds and vendors and every pony who was there. So on the left you have some pony that I know who um, sells many pillows as well as a lot of blankets as you see behind his back there. And yeah, me, me being some pony who likes merch and being an alicorn, I had to explore and see what else there was. But it was also a prime moment to get to meet other ponies that we got to see from the day before. And some of them were really cuddly, every pony. And then some of them were not cuddly, but really impressive still. This every pony is a robot pony. I know, I'm usually creeped out by robots. This was actually a nice robot. He like trotted and everything, and he even gave you a hoof bump if you uh, were nice to him. But he also got angry on occasion if you um, mistrusted him or such. But he he wasn't he wasn't you know mean to me. But every pony at convention also has many panels, and this was probably one of my favorite ones. This was kind of a competition, but also a panel in the same, and it was like where ponies could apply. I didn't know how ponies could apply there. I kind of just like waltzed in there when it was already going. I think it would have been something I could have participated in. It would have been cool, but I guess we were a little late that day. Anyhow, um, what this was is you had to like um, do certain competitions and you have to advance between rounds and you know try to win but some of the competitions there were really kind of devious every pony for example you have this one where there was a board with nails and the humans there have to like push in a certain amount of nails at a certain time and whoever did that the fastest moved on but of course it was not just all precision this one was um, very interesting, it was a egg carrying exercise. We had to like carry an egg between your noses with another pony, and you had to do it with three eggs, and whoever did that the fastest was considered the winner. And of course there was the occasional like heavy duty exercise, and this was tug the rope every pony, where you had to like pull the rope and whoever got the little red thing in the center go to their side first won. It was so interesting to see with the amount of activities to come up, but I also loved the the host. Um, they had uh, they were pretty good with like making the snide remarks you'd expect from someone like Trixie. Um, she she did tell us though that you know Trixie's health insurance doesn't co uh, cover any sort of tripping, so you know we we had to be careful there. But of course, if you wanted to be Trixie's faithful assistant, you had to give it your all. But if you did well, you would advance in the rounds and gain Trixie's appreciation. But then there were harder um, challenges to do as you moved on like this one. But this one is simple math. Every pony knows that is 735. That is not so hard to figure out. However, every competition ends with a bunch of winners. And I know that picture is a little wonky, but it's like the only good one that I could find. And... The last activity that they had to do was an interesting one, is they had to actually make cider on stage, which I think was just the most ridiculous thing to do. I would never be able to contain myself and, you know, put it into a container. I would just drink it, every pony. Oh well. Then I went to another panel, which was the cosplay panel, but I kind of, you know, slipped in there like towards the end, but I did get to see a nice picture of the winners, and there were a bunch of creative ones in there. There was Star Swell the Bearded, there was, um, um, you know, the evil Princess Celestia in the armor. It was nice to see uh, so much creativity on a single stage. But there were some more drastic panels as well, and I think you all know which one I'm talking about. And that was the Plushy Cotton panel, which was five years in the making in this convention. And over the course of these five years, it has gotten progressively more. Just look at the sheer amount of plushies in this one section. It is so many that I wasn't able to fit them into a picture, every pony. But let's go through these. Um, then over here, you have like the um, humans moderating it. But there's also some closer pictures um, that just shows you the sheer masses. But the masses are as impressive as some of the unique plushies there are. There was even a plushie there, I think it was, um, I don't know which one it was, but we'll see, let's go through it. I think it was this plushie right here, the yellow one, which was essentially a giant pony-sized cooler. It was 
Um, it had like a compartment that had cider cans and everything inside of it, and it even has had like a cooling system, so... It was a plushie as well as a cider storage, which is... That, that takes a lot of creativity, but also a lot of ha a handicraft, and I, I guess I'm not that crafty with my hooves. Um, then, let's see. Oh yeah, this is one which is taken from the front. Just look at this sheer avalanche. You could, you could probably drown someone in plushies with the amount of plushies that you had in that stage. I mean, this is this is about as ridiculous as it gets. There's a bit of a close-up. There's candy soda. Look at all the fluttershies, all the rainbow dashes. <laughs> I'm, I mean, the one thing that I'm amazed at is the fact that you know the organizers got all of that done like in the span of a half a day. I mean. That, that is so many plushies. Oh, for those of you wondering how many plushies this is, well, I'll, I have a number. Um, yeah, look at this. Look at the Fluttershies. There's so much Fluttershy, so much Princess Celestia, so much Pinkie Pie, and even a lot of Luna there, too. And this is more a section off to the right-hand side. There is more to the left side as well. I think that had, like, some a lot of OCs in that corner. And this is like getting close to the really big plushies. Spoilers, a lot of those are extremely expensive and you can probably expect to, you know, spend a month's worth of earnings. But it was a great thing to see. I mean, it's, it's just one of those things that you just take in and admire. You just stand there and um, kind of feel overwhelmed and you don't know what to do. Um, but cuddling all of them does seem like a valid option, but I think that would be kind of nasty. Because there's so many ponies who own these, and I think they may mind. But one way to sum this um, up in numbers is as you can see here. It was a total of 800 plushies by almost 200 owners every pony. That is nuts! And it doesn't, it, it just looks like way, way more though. And you can imagine what happens if someday they'll crack a thousand. Um, they're, they're probably gonna have to rent like a, a whole new hall just to be able to, you know, put them all up. That's crazy. And then every pony the evening came and Galacon is uh, famous for one thing the most, which is the evening where you get to dance, dress up in gala dresses and everything and I was no exception. I had an amazing looking dress. It was looking very glamorous. It had a couple of gems embedded into it as well, and the music was splendid. And I would, um, you know, um, point out the fact that the Wasteland Whalers are the ones on the stage in this very picture. Um, that was um, the uh, Pony singing Valhut Remedy and Calamity is to the left there, every pony. It was. Um, probably the most fan pony moment of the entire evening, every pony. It was so amazing. It was awesome, and I guess it's really hard to wrap something this um, emotionally moving into words, every pony. It, it, you can imagine how this is. This is like a dream come true for a pony like me. And then some very interestingly dressed up humans came, and I guess they did want to join the party too. Um, I guess they were looking for a reason to go to the party and I guess um, you know them being like the guards of the humans is like the best reason and best way to get into any party ah maybe that's that's why they're guards so they can secretly party off oh my Celestia the absolute plot twist the next day also started with um, a whole bunch of meeting other ponies and faces which is interesting especially if you're looking at the Oh, sees there. Those look adorable, every pony. And yes, every pony that is supposed to be a nudge as to there being a plush me coming up very soon, every pony. I am getting one, and it's going to be awesome. But if regular sized plushies aren't your thing, take a look at these. They're so big that sometimes you'd even need multiple ponies to even carry them. And they look adorable too. Look at the purple one with the markings and everything. I think that's an OC. And she's huge! She's absolutely giant! But some very interesting um, encounters were made besides the plushies. Look, Fluttershy ran into Sombra, and Sombra did actually not try to mind control someone, which I guess... I guess that counts as progress. Uh, then I went to, like, the, the first Sunday panel, which was... Um, 
about this pony who did some of the writing in the show and they told us about how much um, you can do when you're making the script for a show and how much adaptions and possibilities you have and it was really interesting to see like the the writers take on it on an episode because they you know they they start pretty much from scrap and then um, the development and so on and the process behind it I think that's a, a very interesting concept to every pony. Uh, then we took a bit of a lunch break and I found this very very interesting vehicle lucky it's asked free plushies and I think that is a pretty good way to bait ponies like me to come there but I didn't actually go inside it some ponies insist they don't actually have plushies so you might want to be careful of which you know um, vehicles you go to every pony but my search for plushies was rewarded eventually. Look at this, a pile of plushy ponies. I mean, this is like just the ultimate thing to just like lay in and sleep and make all your worries go right away in an instant, every pony. But there was other merch there too, like um, the, uh, the pillows that I showed you earlier. This was a Twilight one, which I think was pretty adorable actually, dare I say it. But staying on the top of plushies. Look at how big this thing is. This was a very interesting plushie by um, by the fact that it is so heavy that if a single person tries to carry it, it actually damages itself because of the sheer weight. But when you have like at least two plushie, uh, two people, it is possible to carry it. It's 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 just huge. And take a look at the size size comparison. You have like um, a phone there and a table, and those things are like tiny compared to the plush. It is it is insane. But there was even more plushies to be found on some of the other stands. Um, this was... Uh, let's see, look at... Look, let's see if we can recognize some of the plushies. To the left you have um, like a dressed up rarity, then there is a... Um, what, what is that? That uh, wonderful with the white um, mane. I don't, is that Fleetfoot? That could be Fleetfoot. Then you have a, like three versions of Pinkie Pie. There is Daring Do. It is very interesting, and I guess you could really find the plush which is perfect for you no matter who you are, because there's so many of them. Even if you like some of the villains, every pony. I mean, look at that giant Daybreaker plushie. She's, I think, almost as big as the Rainbow Dash. But take a look at that price tag. That is one expensive plushie, but I, I can only imagine how, how much work something like this takes. This, this has to be like a a couple of weeks or maybe even a month's worth of project just to get something like this done. That is crazy. But of course merch isn't just limited to plushies. There were postcards, drawings, you see the little buttons there as well which are always cool and fashionable to have around. There really was something for every pony there. But every pony, we all know the one thing that I'm hyped about all the time and they had karaoke at the Galacon and I've been practicing over the weeks as you know and needless to say no pony had a shot at beating me whatsoever and there were a bunch of other games in that very room that I came across this is them fighting herds which is a, a modified version of fighting is magic every pony so I got to play that a little bit as well it's a very tough game but it's also really fun also got to discover some brand new games like the um, the sewer game with the lonely pony that was on the channel two days ago. I found that on Galacon And for those of you who didn't see that video the description does have you covered and Then every pony came the moment where I wanted to go to the karaoke and I had to push through so many ponies because You know everyone wanted to sing and I guess it was a good moment to see if I could really beat so many ponies at singing And you know what apparently I totally can and after a bunch of singing and seeing all the ponies try their best, I decided it was a little bit of time to, you know, take a break and watch some of the other ponies try. And I think it was, you know, kind of awesome to, you know, see them compete. And most importantly, the Wasteland Whalers eventually did come out to the karaoke and sang with me. Um, it was really, really amazing. And I mean, they're, they're awesome, every pony. <sighs> I'm such a fan pony. But even if you weren't inside all the time, outside you could also find plenty of things that ponies have done. This is um, a drawing which was made with chalk, 
But you were probably wondering, what is it with the little lines and such? That was because it was actually rainy. And in order to prevent, you know, the, the drawings from just going away, ponies protected it. I swear, every pony, something was wrong with the weather ponies. They could have just joined us and partied. But I think they had weather duty and were kind of upset about it. And this is what it looked like before they protected it. It is absolutely amazing to believe this was done in the span of a couple hours and me as someone who's not good at drawing it's absolutely mind blown by something like this but there were also other ponies that got some attention from drawing including this Trixie but I don't think she minds being um, you know booped secretly every pony but eventually we had to go back inside because the gala was coming to a close but before it all ends there's usually a charity auction and the one at Galacon is famous for a very special relationship between two characters, every pony. And that is these two. The left is the Joker and the right is the Batman. And they usually compete for the hat of Peridoto who's standing right behind them, every pony. But this time things went a little different and the audience actually joined them in every pony. And so ponies from both sides started to line up behind the um, you know, creature who they wanted to win and look at that even the mascot of the convention itself aligned with the evil evil joker I thought candy was not that mischievous every pony so over here we have a picture taken near the stage by some pony and you can see just how many people there are that is nuts every pony and before I go to the next picture take a look at the flags that you're seeing like on the the railing there there's people from Canada, from France, from England, there's people from all over the globe here at Galacon. It's pretty impressive to see the amount of, you know, passion the fans show for uh, creatures like us. But eventually it did all have to come to a close and here you see all the people who worked to make it, be it volunteers, be it guests, to make this convention just what it was and to give it that special, warm and cuddly feel that you get when coming to a convention. That's all about your lovely ponies. But of course it's not just only about ponies. I got to see Princess Ember too. She somehow flew over here and uh, we we had a little bit of cider drinking. I think she, she enjoyed it pretty much. But we also got to meet other ponies as well. Look at these adorable um, costume ponies. They I, I don't know what the pony on the right's wearing, but I do like the little sailor looking outfit every pony. And, of course, more and more ponies started to, you know, gather outside and uh, celebrate because it's it's fun. Why, why shouldn't we celebrate? And they got together for a wonderful group picture, every pony. It was so adorable to see. And every pony, I got to give each and every one of these a hug, every pony. And, yeah, that's like a little tradition. If you see ponies like these, give them a hug. It's, it's probably one of the best things you'll ever feel in your life, every pony. Even if some ponies may disagree. So every pony, where some conventions end, others can begin. And this one is um, Heartswarming Con in the Netherlands. And I'm going to be there. There's going to be Dutch traditions. Lots of um, interesting customs to see. Meeting every pony, guests, and everything you can expect out of an amazing convention, every pony. So you can definitely expect to see me there. But besides conventions reopening, also new conventions apparently are making their debut. We have this one, which is a Swedish convention, which is opening next year, Every Pony. I don't know if I'll have what it takes to go there, but it's definitely worth something to share. And if you're living nearby, well, you now have a place to go to. And this one is Everfree Encore, which is a music festival for bronies, which is a very interesting one. It doesn't have like the whole intensity about panels and so but it's all about music and just singing dancing and having as many artists there as you can and just having one hell of a party and i was there when they did it last year and it was super awesome which of course was um i guess elevated by the fact that the wasteland whalers were there i probably am one of their biggest fans but even galacon itself is going to have another issue next year every pony where i also am going to be so every pony with that i thank all you lovely ponies so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye 
And remember, every pony, if you're going to a convention, make sure to meet as many friends as you can to have the best of times, every pony. <laughs>